happy to be a part of this important event. My name is Vasilisa and I represent uh, today the physics part of uh, IHS and I will tell you about about uh, a very mysterious thing which is gravity. Sorry, it is not easy to talk about uh, such an impressive thing. I am impressed since I entered the university. So I study generalized Einstein Cartan theory. If we talk about, oh, it doesn't work, sorry. Yeah, it works. But by the way, if you have any problems with sound, please don't hesitate to tell me. If we, we talk about gravity, we should start from general relativity, which is a, a geometrical theory. The main idea is that Gravity is geometry, and the geometry of the world around us is defined by the material content of the world around us, which, which means that these, uh, these processes that we see, that the, something falls down, all this is defined by the objects of the world around us, the earth, the sun, everything. And uh, the main equation of uh, general relativity is, is here before your eyes. On the left hand side, we have geometry, which is space time curvature. The curvature of space-time and on the right hand side we have uh, material content of the universe of the world and so this is a very elegant idea and this uh, theory Einstein's general relativity agrees for, for now with all experimental data such as uh, various solar system tests and uh, direct uh, observation of uh, gravitational waves and uh, direct observations of black hole black holes surrounding which you can see here by the way if you don't know what to look at you should look at this uh, small black circle in the center and on this uh, on, on this part of the picture which is brighter than the uh, another part these are the, the main uh, confirmations of general relativity so everything looks fine uh, but but there are two dark clouds on the perfect blue sky of general relativity and the first dark cloud is uh, related to the fact that if we look at some galaxy it can be our galaxy or it, it can be uh, any other galaxy we can see that the stars which are far away from the galactic center which is supposed to move slowly because uh, they are far away they don't care about what happens in the galactic center actually these stars are moving very fast they are rotating very fast around the galactic center uh, they sh should not r rotate that fast. 
And the only way to explain this phenomenon within general relativity is to admit that uh, all the galaxies are, uh, are uh, put in some uh, large, uh, enormously large uh, halo of invisible matter, which is called dark matter. So, and uh, these hollows are ten times uh, larger than the, the side of a galaxy. So it, it means that there is a huge amount of dark matter which surrounds the galaxies. There are a huge amount of dark matter in the universe. This is one uh, dark cloud, and another dark cloud is uh, the fact that uh, in the in the a, in the end of nineties, oh, uh, the accelerated expansion of the universe was discovered, and again, the only way to explain uh, explain uh, this accelerated expansion within the general relativity is to admit uh, that our universe uh, consists of uh, not only matter but also some uh, some unclear unknown new type of energy which is called dark energy and this dark energy amount 70 percent of the universe content so uh, it means that in the, uni in the universe we have 70 percent of dark energy and 30 percent of of matter it's it's written uh, 25 i'm sorry i f uh, f forgot uh, uh, how to add numbers but only five percent of this 30 percent of matter is actually the real visible matter which means that uh, if, if uh, general relativity is absolutely right and correct everywhere, we, uh, we live uh, in the universe which is full of, of uh, matter and energy uh, we know nothing about. And I, I, I say now 70 person and I remember how 15 years ago um, my professor uh, gave a talk and he also said 70 percent which means that uh, 15 years uh, passed and nothing changed these dark clouds these two dark clouds remain and uh, scientists still don't know how to how to uh, correctly ex explain them. Uh, experimental physicists uh, try to find uh, dark matter particles already for 30 years and they did not yet succeed. And this is why uh, the following question arises. Is a general relativity 100 person right or not? Because it, look, uh, the, uh, these two uh, uh, phenomena I was talking about here, oh, uh, they are large scale uh, uh, phenomena. These are cosmological uh, phenomena, something which happens on, on the l large uh, scales. So maybe. Uh, um, there exists some other th theory uh, which which coincides with general relativity on the small scales like uh, solar system but which 
differs from general relativity on the large scales. Does there exist uh, another gravitational theory which, which explains these uh, two dark clouds, these two large scale phenomena better than general relativity? And uh, uh, many theories actually were proposed And uh, I, I will talk about uh, the one theory, which, as a, as a exactly as a general relativity, uh, this theory uh, has a geometric origin. Because uh, soon after Einstein's general relativity was proposed, uh, mathematician Elie Cartan uh, realized that uh, the geometry used by general relativity can be actually generalized. Uh, it is very interesting to see how it happens, so I will explain you. Let us take uh, some curved manifold, some, uh, for example, curved space, uh, curved surface. Let's uh, take a point at this surface and let's introduce a vector. Of course, uh, uh, vectors cannot exist on the curved surface, so we have to introduce a plane, which uh, is called a fine space. And now I would like to move uh, this vector uh, along some uh, closed uh, circuit. Of course, I will move it together with this plane in, in, in some way. Uh, for, uh, for example, I can roll this plane uh, on this surface. And after I will do it, I will see some closed uh, trajectory on the surface. And also, I, I will see some uh, trajectory on the plane, like this. And generally speaking, the trajectory which I will see on the plane will be not closed. And uh, the, the fact that this trajectory is not closed is, is expressed uh, through the new ge geometrical notion which is called torsion and uh, also uh, the e e initial vector and the final vector will have a different orientation which is expressed by curvature and this was already known from from um, uh, ge geometry of general relativity So, uh, as a conclusion, one can see that Einstein's general relativity is based only on, on uh, curvature, while uh, in the theory of Cartan, there are two actors, curvature the same as in general relativity, and also torsion. And if you r remember my first slide, curvature uh, uh, curvature interacts with uh, um, matter, and uh, 
torsion sh should also interact with something, and it's supposed to interact with spin of particles. So we see that geometry in interacts with some uh, some uh, properties of matter. And so uh, Eli Kaftan asked, uh, could there be a theory of gravity based on this uh, generalized geometry? And he, he proposed one model which had no uh, experimental consequences. But uh, after that, people still asked again and again the same question because this idea, this beautiful mathematical idea is attractive. And at some stage, people uh, came to uh, the theory, which is called torsion uh, by gravity. I must say, so uh, the term torsion by gravity was introduced by me and Thibaut Damou. Actually, um, many other authors uh, worked on this theory. But uh, uh, me, I uh, concentrated on, on the real uh, observational consequences of this uh, theory, and I work on it. Uh, why, why it is by gravity? Because uh, roughly speaking, we have uh, two uh, gravitons in this theory. Uh, we have a usual uh, massless uh, graviton and we also have a massive graviton with a mass kappa, which is here. So I, I did some studies of this uh, theory and uh, my last studies, me and the professor uh, Thibaut Damou, Mm, my last studies uh, are about black holes in a torsion by gravity. And namely, we found recently that there are two types of black holes in this model. The, the first type is a usual uh, black holes, exactly the same uh, in, as in general relativity. Maybe not exactly the same, but it's, uh, it's another story. Roughly speaking, exactly the same. And uh, uh, another interesting type of black holes also exist. Exist uh, in the limit uh, when uh, mass of uh, the second graviton is small. This uh, second type of black hole uh, has uh, uh, has uh, which is called uh, torsion hair, which means that outside uh, the black hole uh, there exists some additional field, additional to to uh, matrix, which is torsion. And uh, uh, the impressive part of, of this study is related to the recent Nobel Prize of this year. Nobel Prize, which was given for the study of a supermassive compact object in the center of our galaxy. Which, uh, which, uh, admi which is admitted by most of the scientists uh, to be a black hole. So uh, somewhere here, there is a black hole. And uh, on, on this picture here, uh, if you can see my mouse, you, you can see the orbits, the trajectories of uh, the stars, which rotate around uh, the, this black hole, really close to this black hole. 
uh, and these stars uh, are the object of a particular interest of the uh, astronomers, especially one star which was observed very accurately, the star which is called S2. Uh, among other uh, characteristics of this star, there is a thing which is called periastron precession, which uh, this is uh, an effect, a uh, phenomenon uh, of, uh, of uh, precession of the orbit, which means that the orbit is not just an ellipse, a constant ellipse, but uh, this ellipse moves uh, exactly as you can see on this picture. This ellipse uh, slowly, slightly r r rotates uh, each time. And uh, uh, the periastron precession of S2 star was measured very well. Uh, oh, to, to compare uh, the predictions of general relativity and of other uh, theories of gravity with reality. And I asked myself, what, what if this uh, uh, black hole, what if this black hole, which is in the center of our galaxy, is not a usual uh, black hole of general relativity, but this uh, second time, uh, second type, second type of black hole, this second type of black hole, which I have in my model? What if, what if uh, this uh, black hole is my black hole? What, uh, what will we see in this case? What are the observational consequences? And one can calculate the periastron precession uh, uh, of the star S2 uh, around my black hole. And actually, surprisingly, I found that if this black hole is my black hole, that Periastron precession would be enormous. It would be much, much bigger than the periastron precession in general relativity, which uh, which means that if uh, if uh, the object in the galactic center is my black hole. Uh, it, it means that um, torsion by gravity is uh, r restricted, N namely, as you, as you, if you remember the Lagrangian, which is here, uh, I have here uh, the parameter eta, which is a coupling. Uh, constant uh, of torsion. So uh, uh, this, this test, this uh, periastron precession test gave a uh, huge r r r restriction on the coupling constant if, if I assume that uh, the central object is uh, my black hole. Of course, uh, it is not necessary. Maybe it is not my black hole. Maybe it is a black hole of a, a GR type. So this is what I do, and this is uh, what I will continue to do. Uh, so I will continue to look at the observational consequences of, of this uh, interesting theory of gravity uh, because again uh, this uh, ge geometrical idea of oh, 
which which uh, we this ge geometrical idea on which uh, my model based is very attractive and uh, the question which i which i would like to answer is uh, is this model viable can this model be uh, really uh, uh, sorry for, for what the english word uh, uh, does this model describe the re reality better than general relativity or not we'll see this is what i wanted to say <laughs>